the Lord and Master of the Universe, wanted a woman involved in the co-redemption of the human race, just as a woman was involved in the loss of grace for the human family. Welcome to MaryCast. This is Dr. Mark Miravalli, Professor of Theology and Mariology at the Franciscan University of Steubenville. We're going through a series concerning the Fifth Marian Dogma and the messages of the Lady of All Nations. Uh, I do want to confirm once again that these messages are approved by the local bishop, Bishop Joseph Maria Punt in Amsterdam. They were approved on May 31st, 2002 as being of supernatural origin. So with trust and with peace, we united to the church can examine these messages and the focus of these messages, really the backbone of all these apparitions and messages in Amsterdam with the call for a fifth and final Marian dogma. I want to share with you an excerpt from the February 17, 1952 message where our Blessed Mother herself describes how God the Father wanted a woman involved in salvation and how precisely that woman does uniquely participate in the redemption of the world. These are Our Lady's words, and I quote, Now the Lady waits in silence for a long time. Then she resumes, The Lord and Master selected a woman called Miriam, or Mary, from among all the peoples of the world. She was destined through the will of the Father to bring the Son of Man into the world together with his church and the cross. The lady was the handmaid of the Lord. She bore the Son of Man through the will of the Father and was thus necessarily allied with the church and the cross. This woman stands in front of you in this present time as the co-redemptrix, mediatrix, and advocate. Let the following works sink in well. The woman, or lady of all nations, can and will bestow on all the peoples of the world who have recourse to her grace, redemption, and peace. To you all, however, falls the task of introducing the lady of all nations to the whole world. So, what does Our Lady begin with? Uh, she begins with salvation history. And she makes clear that it was the will of God the Father that Mary would become the mother of Jesus. Uh, we know that theologically, and as the messages will speak as well later, that she's the Immaculate Conception precisely so that she can be uniquely participant, uniquely supportive, uniquely cooperative with the Redeemer in restoring the life of grace to the human family. So, the role of the woman is the will of the Father. Now, the Fathers of the Church spoke of this beautifully in concepts called recapitulation and recirculation. In essence, the Fathers of the Church uh, told us that God the Father wanted to use the same elements by which man fell to have man rise. What were the elements, as we know in the revelation of the book of Genesis, that led to our fall? Number one, a man, Adam. Number two, a woman, Eve. Number three, a tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And from those three elements, which of course, with of course the addition of Satan's influence and temptation, you have the fall of the human race. So God the Father in his perfect providence and really as a manifestation of his omnipotence wanted to use a man, a woman, a tree to restore life to the human family. So, as St. Paul tells us, Jesus Christ is the new Adam. Mary, the fathers of the church tell us, is the second or the new Eve. Again, keeping that pattern, as life was lost, so life will be restored. And then thirdly, it is the tree of the cross that leads to our salvation. So, the role of Mary is not arbitrary. The role of Mary is quintessential in having the Father come forward with this recapitulation, this recirculation. Jesus is the new head, as the new Adam. You must have a new Eve to follow that parallel, actually that completely antithetical parallel with what happens in Genesis. So Our Lady 
she says specifically, she, she bears the Son of Man and she becomes allied with the church and with the cross. Now, you could write a doctoral dissertation on that. Because Mary says yes, at the will of the Father, to give Jesus his flesh, to be the mother of the Savior, she's immediately allied with the church. Uh, she is the mother of the church, as the Second Vatican Council teaches, and as Paul the VI proclaims uh, at the end of the council. That means that the spiritual children of the church who come forward from Christ also come, for, come forth from Mary as mother. So, she is immediately allied with the church as the mother of the church. Pope St. Pius X put it this way, that since, since all of us, all Christians, are spiritually united as members to Christ the head, and since Mary gave birth to the physical head of Jesus, then she gives spiritual birth to each one of us, to each one of his members. So, uh, Pius X concludes, we're all spiritual children of Mary. We all come from the womb of Mary. So, Mary is essentially related to the church, but Mary is also essentially related to the cross. This is the prophecy of Simeon in Luke 2, 35 and following. The mother of the sign of contradiction will herself have her heart pierced. Uh, my friends, that's not theological speculation, that's biblical revelation that Mary will have her heart pierced so that the secret hearts of many will be laid bare. What does that refer to? That's referring to the plan of salvation. Uh, most people didn't know how salvation was going to take place. There was great mystery, great, great lack of clarity. Even the apostles themselves, while salvation is taking place, on, on, on Friday, uh, which we call good, uh, even they were not clear of what was happening. So, the mother was predestined to be both mother of the Savior, to give him flesh, but also to suffer with him. And that's in perfect obedience to the will of the Father. So, she's connected to the church and she's connected to the cross. My lady goes on here to explain, Now the lady draws my attention to the globe. I see the globe rotating under her feet and everywhere snow is falling thickly. Do you see, resumes the lady, just like this, the lady of all nations shall be brought all over the world from country to country, from town to town. Let them become one community. Through that simple prayer, this will be realized. Ask your bishop if he would kindly sanction the complete version of the prayer. May the lady of all nations, who once was Mary, be our advocate. Inform your bishop that the Lady of all nations will help and assist him, and that the work of spreading really must go ahead. So, here's the question for, for you and me right now. Has the Lady of all nations spread to your town? At least through you. Are you praying the prayer of the Lady of all nations? If you don't, I invite you to learn this 30-second prayer, this prayer given by Our Lady, not only for the proclamation of the fifth Marian dogma, but as she said, to bring forward an authentic world community, a community in Christ, a community centered at the foot of the cross, and a community ready to carry its cross for the sake of our holy Catholic faith and for the sake of ultimate unity of all in Jesus Christ. Thank you for being with us at Mary Cast. This is Dr. Mark Miravalli. More on Our Lady of All Nations of the fifth Marian dogma to come. God bless. Amen.